We all have the right to feel safe in our homes and on our streets. Whether we're in North York or Scarborough, I will put 400 more police officers on the streets and make sure the criminals know there's no place for them in neighborhoods in Toronto. On November 10th, vote John Tory for mayor. You are watching Toronto One. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ben Chen. And I'm Sarika Segal. On this edition of Toronto Tonight, a special focus on that massive natural disaster threatening Southern California. Plus, that stunning $5.6 billion deficit at Queen's Park. Can McGinty keep his promises? We'll take a look. Also ahead this hour, how much does a typical shopping basket cost at a grocery store compared to a big box store? We will ring up the numbers for you, and the Raptors return to the ACC for the start of their season, but how hot will they be this time around? But first, that deadly wildfire in California and the human toll. They have already scorched an area bigger than all of Toronto, Mississauga, and the rest of Peel region combined. And those fires are still burning ever closer to the heavily populated areas of Los Angeles and San Diego. The orange glow of the devastation in California may fill our living rooms night after night, but for up to a million Canadians who live in Los Angeles, escape is not as simple as turning away from the TV as they watch the flames edge closer and breathe the smoke-filled air day after day. And as they wait for relief, word tonight, our province is looking to help, including sending firefighters and equipment. The first thing they were inquiring about is uh, CL-415 water bombers, which are scoopers which means that they can pick up water off, for instance, uh, the ocean. We also, though, could provide um, fire suppression equipment, fire experts, if you will, resource persons in a number of areas, including incident command teams. Thanks so much, John. You're watching. In the beginning, the Chapman family created ice cream and delivered it to their friends. Manners were invented later. Advice for you, especially if you have kids, about a nasty nuisance in your hair. Yes, we're talking about lice. Oh, the L word. But first, another big box store has landed in Toronto, and that means more discounts for families who love the buy-in-bulk experience. Sam's Club, a Walmart spinoff, is opening four warehouses in the GTA this week. But just how much do you really save? We sent Toronto Tonight's Robert Maxwell to cost and compare. So, welcome to Sam's Club. With a soft Arkansas accent, Sam's Club local merchandising manager Gary Moser is only too happy to show us his wares. VH, or VS2 quality, high clarity uh, jewelry. We got Bose uh, speaker systems. We carry uh, Sony product, Toshiba, JVC, Philips, RCA. Bottom line, though, from what I heard from the guys at uh, Sam's Club today, the competition is a good thing, so we'll see. That All is. Right. Okay. Thank you very much, Robert. And now to Another front in the American invasion, Krispy Kreme. Uh, well, those stores have crept into Canada, and you can find them on every corner in most American states. But here, we've got our own big chains. Tracy Moore takes a look at if those Yankee donuts are edging the old Canadian faithful out. It all started two years ago, and before you knew it, store number two popped up here. And now another store here in Scarborough. Krispy Kreme swooped into Canada like any other American celebrity. Bright lights, lots of fanfare. But two years after Toronto's Krispy Kreme revolution, how do they measure up to the old Canadian faithful, Tim Hortons? We are not on every street corner, and that is, is not what our concept is about. It's about a destination. It's about coming here and enjoying the whole experience of Krispy Kreme. That experience includes fresh, free donuts for everyone that walks through the door and the chance to see what you're about to eat coming down the belt. Now, these donuts are made with a very special recipe, so secret they're secured in a vault in North Carolina. All we know is that they're yeast-raised donuts, and that's what makes them taste so different. The donuts are amazing. They melt in your mouth. The sugar is so melting and sweet. They're just fresh, and they're very, very sweet. Have you ever had uh, donuts at uh, another shop before, like Tim Hortons? Uh, yes. And how do, they, how do these ones compare? 
Uh, Krispy Kreme's donuts are more better than the other donuts. Not according to this very faithful Tim Hortons fan. Donuts are as good as donuts are gonna get. They're, uh, I've never had a better donut, and um, I've had worse donuts. So there's, they're pretty much as good as they get at Tim Hortons. But the fact is, even though there's almost always a lineup at any Tim Hortons, most of these customers aren't here for the donuts. Are you going in to buy donuts? No. Uh, do you guys buy the donuts in there? No. You don't buy, no one buys donuts. Do you guys buy donuts? Hello, donuts? <laughs> so is Tim Hortons really even competition for Krispy Kreme? The only way to figure out that for sure is to put the two donuts head to head in a highly scientific taste test. Here's what these Toronto One staffers thought of donut number one. It was pretty good. Uh, it had a, a nice uh, sugary coating on it and uh, wasn't, uh, wasn't too syrupy or, or, uh, or moist. It, was, it was, uh, had a good texture to it. Um, I liked it. I think it's, it's a little gooey. I agree. I think it's a little bit gooey, but uh, it was very good. And now for donut number two. This one was definitely better. It was uh, softer. It almost melted in your mouth. Very good. And Catherine, how do you feel about donut number I two? I really like this one. It was so good. I'm going to have to uh, vote against my compatriots here. Uh, given that I don't have a massive sweet tooth, I found it a little bit too overbearing. Well, that's two to one for Krispy Kreme. What is it that makes these donuts so delicious? You would think it had something to do with the fat. Are you concerned at all about the fat? Yes. But one Krispy Kreme original glazed yeast donut is actually fewer calories than a glazed yeast honey dip donut at Tim Hortons. And there's only two grams more fat in a Krispy Kreme glaze than there is in a Tim Hortons honey dip. Go figure. The real test will be in years to come when we'll know if that American company, Krispy Kreme, was able to transform into a Canadian staple. Tracy Moore, Toronto One. I think our staff, they're still blindfolded eating the donuts. It's been like three hours. <laughs> I know. Come back and uh, take the blindfolds <laughs> off. Uh, from that appetizing number, when we come back, what could be lurking in your child's scalp? It may not be your fault. What you can do about lice. No rules, no limits, and there's nothing else like it. The action heats up as Billy and the gang hit the bar at YYZ. Tonight on Last Call, we will be talking about sex in Canada. Yes, we will be. <laughs> <laughs> the author, Chris Gudgeon of The Naked Truth, will be joining us. Check us out tonight on Last Call, live from YYZ, only on Toronto One. Last Call, tonight at 11 on Toronto One. You are watching Toronto One. Well, if you uh, think it's been a wacky mayoral race so far, get ready for Whack the Mayor. This is a game on the web that lets you whack some sense into the candidates. Yeah, you also get an idea of where the front runner stands on the major issues based on the candidates' actual statements. Toronto Tonight's Robert Maxwell played along. We'll call it an internet straw poll of sorts. Very unofficial, but in some ways, amazingly accurate. WhackTheMayor.ca here is capturing the imagination of some voters while at the same time educating them on some of the big issues. <laughs> WhackTheMayor.ca adds a lighter Monty Python-esque flavor to the mayoral debate. And here in Toronto's entertainment district, visitors to this Peter Street Internet Cafe are all smiles. They're trying to, as the site suggests, whack some sense into these animated candidates. But is this inspirational in some way? Or does, it, <laughs> does it at least remind you of the, of the key uh, factors? Well, at least it brightens up the day a bit. Do you think this might be a, a good way to, to learn about the issues or, <laughs> or at least yeah, raise, raise I think, awareness? Yeah. I think humor is always good. This is good, though, for the youth, because a lot of youth these days aren't voting. And when you put it on the World Wide Web, that does help. Up till now, a lot of the mayor's debate has been presented in very formal, traditional settings on some stage somewhere in some community center. Candidates lined up like so many bowling pins, and the voters actually physically have to go out and see them. Now there's this new online way for voters to find out where the candidates stand simply by whacking them. <laughs> The creator of WhackTheMayor.ca is a guy by the name of Bill James. Says the idea came to him after hearing the story where outgoing Mayor Mel Lastman very publicly told David Miller he'd never become mayor because Miller had said, well, just too many wacky things. Politicians say dumb and stupid things. 
They do? They do, and we keep hearing it. And so we've heard so many stupid things, we thought we'd make a game out of it. And these are actual quotes? They're all based on actual quotes and their characters. Uh, of course, they've been satirically enhanced to improve the funniness. The results on the site are based on which candidate is left standing and therefore most popular, and who is most commonly whacked first. So what do the numbers look like? Well, they appear to be similar to the latest actual poll results this week with David Miller in the lead. We're surprised that it matches so closely the official polls, you know, where they spend hundreds of thousands of dollars and there's all kinds of cross-checking. Ours is just letting people click on what they think is stupid. Already, Jones says there have been about 10,000 whacks at the site. Whackthemare.ca will be online till voting day, November 10th. After that, it'll be archived as an election snapshot, just for laughs. Robert Maxwell, Toronto One. Coming up in entertainment, Nicole loves Lenny. Tom's ex fesses up about the new love of her life. And Toronto One gets in the ring. Our own Dina Pugliese puts on the gloves with dance hall rapper Snow. Join us for Chevrolet Aveo's Amazing Toronto Adventure on Toronto One beginning November 3rd. Tune in to Toronto... You are watching Toronto One. Hey, did you know that it's World Matrix Day? Uh, <laughs> well, in case you didn't know, across 80 countries on this planet, the entire planet, the third installment of the sci-fi trilogy starring Keanu Reeves opened today. And because of how Warner Brothers promoted the movie, fans of Neo's saga will be able to see the film at exactly the same time around the world, no matter what time it is. Bill joins us from the Paramount Theatre, which is showing the movie every hour on the hour. Is there a lineup, Bill? You know, there's not a huge lineup, but I think it's because it's being shown so often. There is a steady stream of people coming in and out of this theater, and it is showing on 20,000 screens across the world opening today. And a lot of the stars were at the premiere in Tokyo at a theater in Tokyo. Larry and Andy Wachowski, with the writers and directors, Joel Silver, producer, Keanu Reeves, and Jada Pinkett Smith, who played Niobe, was also at that premiere. Uh, but I'm sure people right around the globe, the U.S., Canada, right here in Toronto, are probably lined up for tickets, wanting all day long, wanting to be able to get in. To the, see this film. Bill, you know, you were talking earlier about uh, mixed reviews. It, when you watch part three, do you finally understand what the heck happened in part <laughs> two? Because, you know, maybe I'm like really dense, but I. I I don't know, I didn't get it. Well, a lot of people weren't satisfied with the second one because some people thought it, it gave up too much of storyline for special effects. This one apparently gets a little bit more on track with that and tends to tie up some of the loose ends, but it just, because you're also playing catch up on, you know, this third installment, the beginning just has a lot of explaining to do. And uh, because of that, it takes uh, a bit of a slow pace until you really get into about 50 minutes into it. But people saying it does get a little more satisfying after that and does tie up a lot of those loose ends. All right, in fact, Bill, well, here's what people had to say after they watched the movie. Let's take a look. Suck that. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, there wasn't even a lot of fighting. There wasn't even, it wasn't really that interesting. It was a very great movie. It was intense. It had a lot of uh, different uh, levels. And I mean, you could look at it and see biblical aspects in it. They obviously went for more, of, they wanted to have more of a feeling that they had in the first film with a lot of plot development and everything else, which, which is great. But it just sort of, I don't want to ruin it for anybody, but it just kind of drops. It was all right. Uh, it was okay. First one was a lot better. Yeah, it was. But we yeah. found closure. I gotta just make In Alabama. Show me your hands! When you're charged for a murder you didn't commit. At what point did you shoot the clerk? You'd better get a good lawyer. Do you know any great attorneys? My cousin Vinny! He should have his own style. You stick out like a sore thumb around here. Oh, yeah, you blend. And away with words. You could say that. I did say that. Would you say that? Vinny is not that lawyer. Oh, you're a smooth talker. You are. My Cousin Vinny, next on Toronto One. favorite part of the show. <laughs> Eating? Yeah. That's potato right. chips. <laughs> okay. We're going to do a big uh, taste test right now about you how, guys. what you think of Toronto. We have three choices. What would potato chips taste like if they were from the city? Would they be Bloor Street-ish? Would they be College Street? Or Queen Street? What do you guys think? What would you name I chip flavors? I was going to say Danforth, but it's not even Danforth. in there. Danforth. Danforth's not in there. Danforth okay. chips would be good. Uh, come, on, guys, come on, guys. College. I don't I know. Live there, so. I, okay, I'm going to go college. 
You're, you guys are right. Oh, you guys are so smart. Oh, right yeah. here, yeah. we've got oh, these new cool. Lay's chips. One is a Cape Breton salt and vinegar chips, well, we, which I'm taking home. Do we uh, and then Toronto College Street. That's safe. Okay. College Street pizza tasting chips. Ooh, they're really it's red. Would this be like are California gonna, veal sandwiches? Sell these? Literally. Okay. Man, are you not giving me the yeah, best? Hurry up. Oh. We're running out of time. Okay. They're so good. Are they? They're so good. Oh. Wow. Thank hey, you, you know much. Much. Yeah, while Fakes, we're eating. Folks at Frito Lies, thank you. Yeah, mm. tomorrow morning, join <laughs> Wei Chen uh, on Toronto Today. That starts at uh, 5 30. And as for us tomorrow evening, we'll show you how far some Torontonians are going to prepare for their funerals. We'll see you back here. Thanks for watching us. Good night. Let's keep eating. I know. Tomorrow on Toronto Today, I'll be here to help you with your morning commute. We got more.